Hello, good evening and welcome. You've just entered the arena. I'm Michael Corrin. Until recently, Michael Corrin was perhaps the most high-profile Catholic voice in Canadian media. You've managed to convince society that gay marriage is acceptable. It has nothing to do with the law. It has to do with fashion. He wrote bestsellers with titles like Why Catholics Are Right. He's been a columnist for many of the big Catholic publications and hosted TV shows where he became a shining star of the religious right. Our schools are being drowned in gratuitous and agenda-driven social programs. One of his best-known arguments was against same-sex marriage. The only place for a sexual relationship is within marriage between one man and one woman. But now, Corin says he was wrong. A door opened and I, I just I, I realised how much how much anger, and I'm sorry, but how much hatred there was out there. He's now so critical of the Catholic Church's position on same-sex marriage that he's left to become an Anglican. He says the reaction from some Christian conservatives has been vicious. On Twitter, he's been told he's loved by Satan and that his kids are gay. He's written all about his experiences in his new book, Epiphany, a Christian's change of heart and mind over same-sex marriage. I sat down with Michael Corrin earlier in Toronto. Michael, so nice to meet you. Pleasure. Your book is quite interesting. <laughs> um, Sounds like a euphemism, doesn't it? Yeah, well, you start by saying that this is a very different book by a very different Michael Corrin. Mm. What do you mean? Oh, golly. I had quite a change in my life. I mean, the title is, is, is extremely pertinent, an epiphany. I don't want to sound too pious, but um, I changed. I changed a lot, and there was no sinister motivation. You know, didn't do it for money. I lost a lot of money. I didn't do it because any member of the family was ask, asking me to. I am a person of faith. You know, I'm a Christian, and I was increasingly uncomfortable with claiming to worship a man who was the personification of love and justice and forgiveness, tolerance, including, not excluding, never judging, reconciling that with a stance I had which was pretty judgmental, opposing abortion, homosexuality, euthanasia. And I was, look, I don't think it was close to a breakdown, but I, I wasn't comfortable in my own skin. And it got to a point where I knew I had to make a decision. A couple of things occurred in, in not so much in my personal life, but in, in public, the Ugandan situation. I spoke out against what Uganda was doing. It's a deeply homophobic culture, more so probably than anywhere else in Africa. And they were going to make it even worse. They were going to bring in legislation that could have executed people simply for being gay. And I tried to launch a campaign against this, realized conservative Christians were not in my camp. In fact, they were telling me to shut up. Some were being very insulting. They called you, Corin, a friend of the gays. The friend of the gays, yes. It's not a terrible thing, friend of the gays. Uh, and I read a column in, in The Sun saying, I'm sorry. It was June 2014. I'd already been saying it for a while. And I said, I'm sorry for any pain I've caused, any harm or hurt. I didn't mention marriage, by the way. I was still a bit cowardly. And I called for a new dialogue and a new language. And uh, it was like the gates of hell opened. I mean, the, the, the vitriol and the abuse. And but you know, a, a lot of gay people will hear that and think, yeah, well, what about all the, the abuse towards us? And that they oh, yeah. see you as, as part of that. You, you identify yourself as sort of the main opponent of same-sex marriage in this country. And, the, and they're quite right. And I, I've never said, uh, tr expunge all of that. Look, I, I don't think I was ever hateful. I know I hurt people. Well, you say you did embolden hateful yes, people. I think I enabled, I gave a, maybe an intellectual veneer. I'm, I'm not an intellectual, I'm not a fool, but I think I probably gave a, uh, an intellectual veneer to some of the arguments against same-sex marriage. So that's not hateful? It may have uh, led to, to hatred, yes. I haven't shied away from this. You know, I, 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 I've opened myself up and I said, and I, look, this is what I said, this is what I did. Um, I mean, don't caricature me. I wasn't Fred Phelps. Um, I, I hosted TV shows for 15, 16 years. Loads of gay people, gay organizations, gay leaders. They were always treated with the, the utmost respect. I tell you the truth of this. In a way, I was living a lie. Now, it wasn't a deliberate one. Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out, because you say that you're a bit ashamed, but I'm yeah, not I'm... sure whether you're ashamed of your own behavior as homophobic or whether you're ashamed of the church for being homophobic. Uh, that's a very good question. Both. I mean, I, I never thought of myself as homophobic, but there is no doubt that there are many people in the gay community who did. And that's what matters, that what I wrote and said hurt them. So it's no good me saying, oh, I wasn't. That's irrelevant. The fact is, they felt that. And I've met people, I've sat down, I've wept with people who've said to me, you wrote an article, and do you know what it did to me? And, and that, that means something. 
it hurt me very much. And, and I've, I've offered contrition. After a while, it just becomes uh, maudlin if you keep on apologizing. But I've tried to, to do my best. But am I ashamed of the church? And I use it in the generic sense, the, the Christian world. Yes, yes, I am. I am. I, I've studied scripture. I know there's a whole chapter in the book about scripture. It's a big book, the Bible. There are about six references to homosexuality. And I, I say in the book, and I stand by it, that the Catholic Church employs more gay men than any other institution in the world. And it's true. And a, a lot of Catholic clergy are gay. Now, many of them are celibate. Not all. I would never out anyone. But, you know, I've, I've been around for many years in Catholic circles. And so on the one hand, this is going on. And simultaneously, they're, they're condemning, condemning gay people. I interviewed three former Catholic clergy in, in the book. And one of the chapters. And they don't hate the church, but they say that the hypocrisy and the dishonesty is, is rampant. And, and so I am ashamed that Christians have not lived as such. And a bit ashamed of yourself. Oh, absolutely ashamed of myself. I mean, it, it, the first chapter is about what happened to me. And it's more, if it happened to me, it can happen to other people. I've never said that what I suffered was what gay people suffered. I make a point of saying this is a glimpse of a shadow, of an indication. Of, I mean, I'm, I would never compare, but at least it opened my eyes. But yeah, and I think it's important. Even beyond this issue, we have to be able to say sometimes, I was wrong, I'm sorry. And if we can't do that... You've lost a lot of income. You've, you've been cut <laughs> yeah. off. <laughs> yeah, can you lend me some money? <laughs> <laughs> that bad? <laughs> no, oh, look, uh, I, I lost... Columns. I, I lost a TV gig. I lost speaking engagements. I lost a, a, a website uh, a daily broadcast. Yeah. If you but doesn't that lead to a question of maybe, as you say, you know, you had bills to pay, and this was this was your income, and that's what kept. That's what kept me away. May, maybe uh, not consciously, but perhaps subconsciously. Yeah. There was also, you know, when you're in, in journalism to a degree in public life, that part of how you identify is how other people perceive you. You know, I, I was speaking every two weeks. I was flying all across North America. Within 10 days, everything was gone. Now, okay, that happens, but suddenly you realize, I'm not doing that anymore. And column after column, we, you can't write here anymore. I was asked to be a regular guest host on um, 100 Huntley Street. And I have the email so I can say this. They're, they're in the book, actually. They're good people, but they're, they're, I, I did five shows for them. I had all these others booked, and they emailed me and said, sorry. We have to sever links with you. You're too publicly identified with, uh, with uh, same-sex marriage. So, yeah, I, I probably deserve it, but I did pay a price. Uh, people need to know that because th there's a sense of paranoia and persecution in the Christian world that Christians are suffering because they won't go along with the gay agenda. You know, they, they won't bake a cake or make a wedding dress or something. Good Lord. That's not the reality. The reality is gay people are still facing that persecution, generally not in Canada, but there are still issues. Parts of the United States, without doubt, there are people losing their jobs at Catholic schools and evangelical colleges for being gay or even supporting same-sex marriage. You say a lot of gay people say they've forgiven you. Mm -hmm. Do you forgive you? Oh, oh you're good. <laughs> uh, not completely. It's difficult, isn't it? Um, I have a strong sense of neurosis, probably, you know. Half Jewish, working class, convert to Christianity. I mean, help me here. Um, largely, but not completely. There are times when I think, you know, most of us have incidents in our life and, and we, we recall them and we cringe. Oh, why did I do that? It, it, people have said to me, what about this book you wrote? What about this that you said? I can't expunge it. I can't make it disappear. I can only try and repair any damage I did. But no, to answer your very good question, have I completely forgiven myself? Not really, no. So what happens for you now? Um, well, I continue to write and I'll be studying, studying theology, divinity, so I do with that. Um, do you think you're going to change anything with this book? I think I have, actually. I mean, I, I've heard from some people. Gay people, how they react, well, they've already made up their mind. Those people who scream and shout at me all the time and send me nasty letters, hard to reach them. But there's a lot of people in the middle who are unsure. And I've, I've received emails and, and so on from people like that who've said, well, I'm not really with you here, but I do like you, and I'm, I'm going to have a look at this book. I'm going to read this book. And you never know how you're changing people. I'm sure you've had this in your life. You meet someone, you change them. You weren't even aware of it. 
Yeah, I, I, th I think I might. I pray that I do, that I change the conversation. Um, the Anglican Synod in Canada is meeting in July, and someone very kindly bought 40-odd books to give to every bishop. It might not change minds, but you might change some. It might change one. Even one will be wonderful, but I'm hoping we can do better than that. That's a really interesting book. Thank Pleasure. you so much. Thank you so much.